Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday school service. Now, before we get uh, started today, I'm going to go ahead and open in a, a short word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day that uh, that you've uh, blessed us with, and for the many things that, uh, that you know you've blessed us with uh, throughout the year, allowing us to keep in uh, contact with each other through uh, various ways, and uh, allowing to keep doing these uh, recordings for uh, Sunday school and. And uh, you know, keep us together through, as a as a church through these uh, trying times, Lord. And uh, God, I ask that you would uh, you know continue to be with us as as we uh, end this year out. And uh, Lord, I, I pray that you would be with uh, those who've been affected by the virus and you know our frontline workers and uh, you know our caregivers, Lord, that you know are working so hard to, to try to keep us uh, as as healthy as possible, Lord. And I, I God, I also ask that you would. Uh, you know, be with us and help us from, uh, you know, remember the, the reason for a Christmas as it uh, quickly approaches here, Lord, that it's all about you and, and your coming and your glory, Lord. And uh, God, I just ask that you would allow me to go through this lesson with that uh, same idea that you would use me uh, to uh, get to the uh, point across that you need, Lord. In uh, Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right, so uh, with that said, uh, with looking forward to the uh, Christmas season, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a, a, a detour out of the uh, book of Psalms for a moment, and, uh, and we're, we're going to look in, uh, into Luke. And the book of Psalms, it's, uh, it, it speaks of, uh, which we're studying, speaks of you know, the suffering of Christ as well as his uh, majesty, and it was used uh, in the temple worship worship service you know, they would do, uh, you know, a, lot, a lot of these were uh, you know, made to either be you know, read or were sang during the uh, temple service and it was all pointing to the Lamb of God you know the coming Messiah and uh, so you know, how, how fitting is it that uh, before we get into our section here in Luke that uh, the, the, the uh, angel Gabriel had come to uh, Zacharias in the, in the temple there you know when he was magnified or uh, you know, he, when he was uh, ministering for, for God there, and, uh, you know, Gabriel come in and uh, you know, lets him know that you know, he and his, uh, his wife, uh, Elizabeth, are, are going to uh, bear a son in their, in their old age. And that uh, you know, he was going to prepare you know, the, the, the heart, the, the hearts of the people for the coming of the Lord. And so, you know, like we see a lot of this uh, Bible prophecy fulfilled here in these uh in these sections that we're going to look at, and so uh, yeah. But that, that being said, I want to go ahead and take a quick look at uh, Isaiah 40 and uh, in verse three, because this you know speaks of their their son John, John the Baptist. Uh, that says the uh, the voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, that make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And so you know he was he came and announced that to uh, you know, to them. You know, Gabriel is also the same uh, you know, angel that had uh, come to Daniel, Daniel chapter nine, you know, at the time of the uh, you know, evening worship in the temple. So, uh, you know, it's it's very fitting that he's linked to the temple, linked and linked to the Messiah. That he's the one that's bringing this news, uh, and he uh, later brings the the news to Mary that she's going to be uh, you know, deliver the, the the promised you know the, the Christ child. And so, uh, you know, that's uh, six months later. And uh, you know, with, with this, you know, we, we start the, uh, the you know, new era dawning. You know that, that God has come with us to, uh, <clears throat> you know, come and, and save us from our sins, and you know we, we start, you know, the the, the new covenant there at, at that point. And uh, you know, so it's it's no wonder that the, the greatest news that you know has, has ever been given to us is uh, you know something that's you know sung by you know, like the angels sing that sing glory to God. I mean, we have so many songs that. That we have, that uh, you know, and hymns that are, were written about the nativity and about uh, you know what what's been done, and it's this beautiful poetry that's in, inspired by the uh, Holy Spirit. And so, uh, as we study the uh, birth and, and nativity here, we're we're going to look at also uh, you know Mary has her own little song that, that she sings, you know, her her own song, um, it, you know, in this and uh, you know about you know, being the, and, you know, as the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, and so. Uh, well, looking into that, let's go ahead and we'll start in with the uh, announcement here in, uh, in Luke 1, and we're going to start in uh, verse 26. And it says, uh, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth, 
And so uh, this is the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy is uh, what it's referring to, that uh, Gabriel was sent to God and, uh, and went to Galilee and to uh, Nazareth. And Nazareth, um, it wasn't the uh, you know, best best place uh, you know, at, at the time. You know, it, was, uh, it wasn't exactly known for you know, being, you know, being righteous. It was kind of the, uh, well, let me sum it up this way. Let's go to uh, uh, John 1 and uh, 46 for a moment. And... And we'll see that even the, even one of the disciples, you know, was kind of a corrupt city and was well known for it. Uh, and uh, Nathaniel said unto him, "Can there be any good thing that come out of Nazareth?" And so it, it, it wasn't uh, the, the best part of uh, of Israel in uh, in that area. All right, and so uh, you know, going on into uh, verse back into Luke into verse twenty seven, it says, uh, "To a uh, virgin, a spouse to a man." whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And uh, the angel came unto her and said, Hail, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art, art thou among women. And so you know, this is where we uh, you know, get into you know, the, the Catholics' belief of you know, immaculate conception and uh, you know, praying, uh, you know, praying for Mary to help them, putting a lot of emphasis on on Mary, and uh, uh, too, you know, too much emphasis on, on Mary because uh, because of this. I mean, she, yes, she was, uh, you know, a, a, a good, godly woman in a very corrupt area, and you know, we need to remember that and, uh, and remember that you, that, you know the good things and uh, that the, that she. You know, she does and demonstrates as we go through this, but uh, you know, there, you know, we don't need to lift her any higher than that. You know, and she's she's not sinless like the uh, like the Catholics say. You know, she's still a sinner just just like us. And uh, you know, here she is. You know, she's a virgin. You know, not yet not yet married, and uh, you know, betrothed. You know, promised to uh, Joseph of the, of the house of David. And so, you know, these uh, betrothals they they last about. Uh, uh, a year, and uh, you know, it was it was serious business. Uh, you know, it was you're you're pretty much married, but not quite living together. Like, you know, you haven't went through the ceremony and haven't consummated the marriage. All right, so uh, uh, we go on here, and it says, uh, and uh, when she saw him, uh, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this sh this should be. And so, you know, I'm sure that, you know, Mary's never seen an angel before, and so she's, you know, wondering, who, who is this, and what kind of greeting is this that, that, that you give me, that, you know, blessed is, you know, that I'm going to be blessed among women. Uh, you know, she doesn't quite understand, so she's going through her mind and probably wondering what exactly, you know, he means by that, and, uh, you know, what exactly he's, uh, you know, saying. So that, you know, next we, uh, you know, we see Gabriel Gabriel go on, and it says, and, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. For thou hast found favor with God. Uh, so you know she's she's thinking in her mind. You know she can see, he can see that she's kind of fearful, wondering what's going on, and you know he calms her and said, lets her know that, that she's found favor, um, that, you know, she, that she's chosen for something great here. And uh, and we go on into the verse thirty one, and we can see what he's uh, the, the the message that he's delivering here. And he, and, uh, he says, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. And you know that name Jesus, that means uh, Jehovah saves, uh, or Jehovah is Savior. And so, or I'm sorry, is, is salvation. And so, uh, you know, it, she lets, he lets her know that she's going to, uh, you know, to deliver the, the, the Messiah here. And uh, so, you know, obviously she's, she's going to have some, some questions. And uh, you know, we go on to the, uh, as we, you go on here in, in the verse uh, 32, and it, he says, uh, He shall be great and shall be called Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man. Okay, so that's that's where her question is. So uh, he explains, you know, fully that uh, that she's going to uh, you know, deliver the promised Savior. You know, he's saying that the, you know the Son of the Highest. You know, this is the, this, you know, the Son of God is, is what he's saying. And that uh, and then 
sitting on the throne of David, which no descendant of David had been on the throne since the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem in 586 B.C. Now at that moment, uh, Israel was ruled by the Roman Empire. Um, and unlike Zechariah, so Mary didn't doubt what, what he said. Uh, you know, instead, she's, um, she's like, she, 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 she doesn't ask for a sign. Uh, you know, instead, she's just wondering, you know, how is this promise going to be realized? Um, you know, so what, what troubled Mary was the uh, part that, that she was to play in God's plan. You know, how is it? Like, you know, I, I see your plan and everything, Lord, but, but how are you going to use me? Like, I, I, I'm i just, you know, I'm just a virgin. I, I have not known a man. You know, that, that word know is the, uh, you know, the same word that's uh, used many times in the Bible to show that, you know, that, that, that there was a sexual relationship that, uh, and, you know, Mary had, had was a chaste virgin and, and would be until the, I mean, until, you know, her marriage with Joseph and they, you know, go through the uh, consummation. So this question that she's asked seems like it's something that, that you know, can't be answered uh, by, you know, by Gabriel. However, you know, he goes in and uh, you know, answers that uh, question uh, for her as we uh, you know, go on here into our uh, next verse. And uh, the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And so not only does he explain, you know, how, how it's going to how it's going to come come to be as far as the physical part, uh, he goes it a little bit further. So you know, he explains that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and the power of God would overshadow her you know, for, for the incarnation. And then uh, he goes in above and beyond that and says that the, the, the child that's conceived and, and born uh, you know, of her, um, how, how is he going to escape the corruption of, of human nature? You know, Mary didn't even ask that question, but he answered that one anyway. He said that the, the one that Mary will conceive and bear will be holy. He, even as God himself brings about the virgin birth, he also guarantees that no taint of human corruption will touch this child. This is the Holy One, and he shall be called the Son of God. There's uh, no, no corrupt, depraved, uh, human nature, rather that there's a holy nature as the Son of God. And then, uh, you know, we, we go on forward to uh, our uh, next verse here, and, he's, uh, and he also explains about, you know, what's happened earlier. He says, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, uh, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. And, uh, and says, then he goes on to say, for, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And, and so uh, and now we're at uh, Mary's response here. And uh, you know, what, a, what a great and humble response this is here. And, uh, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And so you know, here she is, and, and uh, you know, that act of surrender, she says, well, you know, Look, I'm, I'm, I'm your handmaid, Lord. And uh, so, uh, you know, she's completely prepared for everything that's going to come about for that. And, uh, you know, at that, you know, at that time, you know, we're, we're thinking of, you know, she's, you're promised to somebody else. And, uh, you know, she's, you know, she's, she's having this, going to have a child. And, uh, you know, so there's going to be a lot of people that are saying things, you know, about her and all these, you know, you know reproaches and, and these uh, taunts because they're going to assume that uh, you know she didn't follow through the betrothal and and, and stay, you know, stay separated as promised that you know she was she was untrue and she's going to be you know rejected and, 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 and an outcast. But uh, you know even so I mean there was much that she didn't understand even after that Jesus would like that she went ahead and you know saw that that was what the Lord needed and went ahead and took that on. Um, and then, uh, you know, afterwards, uh, there was much she didn't understand even after Jesus was born, but she trusted God completely and, and bowed to his will without complaint. And then so uh, we go on here into uh, verse uh, 39, and uh, you know, we go on to uh, where she meets with Elizabeth here. All right, and, uh, and Mary arose in those days and went in, into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, 
And Elizabeth was filled, with, was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence, it, whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a, a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. All right, so uh, you know, here we uh, your Mary goes and uh, you know, goes to speak to uh, Elizabeth because you know, Gabriel had went ahead and uh, let let her know that you know her her relative, you know that co cousin is also a relative. Um, uh, Elizabeth was, was going to give birth as well, a uh, miraculous birth also. And so she's going to be one of the people that she can talk to. And so uh, you know, she goes and, and goes to speak to her. That, you know, she's going to be one of the people that, that is going to believe her and, and going to uh, you know, open, or welcome her with, with arms open. And so uh, when she goes to, be, to visit uh, Zacharias and, and uh, Elizabeth, you know, you know, a few days after Gabriel's visit, uh, you know, Mary uh, you made that four or five day journey from where, where she was in Galilee, you know, into Judea. And uh, as soon as Elizabeth heard the voice of Mary, uh, like immediately the Holy Spirit filled her. And uh, it seemed that, you know, that she received the uh, re revelation that the Lord, that the, the, from the Lord that Mary was to be the mother of Christ. Uh, you know, she, she mentions that later in one of, in one of the, in, uh, you know, the verses there. And also the babe in the womb, you know, John, uh, was, you know, John the Baptist, you know, responded by, with a joyful leap. And this isn't like, you know, just some natural new movement. This is something that, uh, you know, she noticed, uh, you know, above and beyond that, you know, that, that little fluttering that, uh, you know, you usually feel. You know, this is the, even the child, you know, had, had recognized the activity of the Holy Spirit in the presence of his Lord. And so uh, by uh, the revelation and, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth broke into song, uh, you know, as an ode to Mary. You know, she starts into the, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, blessed is she that uh, believed that there shall be a performance of those things which shall be told from the Lord. You know, this is, uh, and, you know, she, I'm sorry, she started with, blessed art thou uh, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, or, or womb. And so, so, so she starts in, in, in humility. You know, what, what great honor this is that the uh, the mother of the Lord, our Lord, should visit her. And uh, you know, then that was like as soon as she heard Mary's uh, Mary's greeting, you know, all these things started taking place. And Elizabeth assured Mary that the uh, Lord would perform all the things that had been told her. You know, as as I read in that uh, you know last verse there. You know, that the, there should be a performance of those things which were told from the Lord. You know, so that's, a, that's amazing. You know, God called upon Mary in this uh, diff, difficult situation, you know, being a human instrument for, for the Christ's birth. And, uh, you know, this is going to be all sorts of social pressures that, that you know, she would undergo. Uh, you know, later on in Luke, we see that, uh, in, her, in the, uh, the other Gospels, we see that Joseph was about to put her away until the intervention from... Uh, uh, you know the angel as well, but she was uh, perfectly willing to go ahead and do what the uh, Lord had asked her to do. Uh, you know, why, why can't we be that submission as, uh, submissive as Christians today? You know, that's uh, you know perhaps you know, for, you know perhaps only uh, or you know why can't we be that submissive to the Lord today? I mean, you know, perhaps. You know, we can't give an answer for that now, but you know, one day we will have we will have to when we face God. All right, so uh, let's go forward into our next portion here, and we, we look at the uh, the song of Mary, and so we go into uh, verse forty six, and uh, this is actually this this song is actually um, in, broken into four stanzas. I'm going to go ahead and give a little background before I start reading here. Uh, so uh, verses 46 through the first half of 48 is the first stanza, and then the uh, second stanza is uh, the last half of 48 through 50, uh, and then the third is 51 to 53, and then the last is uh, uh, 54 through 55. Each of them have their own, uh, own thing that they focus on, uh, you know, this being uh, 
you know, like the psalms we study have have a focus and poetry just in the same kind of way. Yeah, you know, we'll mention something and then we'll kind of expound on it. Is is the way that it works. And instead of our you know, rhyming that we do in our stanzas, that's how the uh, that's how the poets you know, worked in there with the psalms. You mention something and explain it more, or uh, like in Psalm one, you know, they would mention something and then they would show a contrast. And so this is. She's going to you know, talk about something and then expound upon it uh, as we go through this. And so let's uh, let's start with uh, 46 and and I'll uh, read through 48a or that first part of 48 so we can get that first stanza in here. And Mary said, "My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, uh, for He hath regarded the low state of His handmaiden." And, you see, and you know, notice how like you know, hum, humble this is um, when she begins with this uh, when she begins with this uh, you know, response with the psalm that she has, and she uses words of scripture to express her own praise to God. Uh, a lot of these, uh, like the, the beginning of this, my soul doth magnify the Lord. That's that's from Psalm thirty four verse two and uh, three, and then uh, you know, as we go on in the in the next verse and. Uh, you know, saying that uh, my spirit hath uh, rejoiced in God, my Savior. You know, that's in uh, that's in Psalm thirty-five nine. So she she knows her she knows her you know, Bible really well. And uh, so this first one is just going to and this first part, as you see, focuses on uh, you know, her experience. And uh, you know, as we get on, we'll go on to some more um, you know information here. And uh, a couple things that I wanted to point out uh, here as well is with the um, you know the, the expounding. So uh, you know in the first sense, uh, stanza we have you know this her soul magnified God and then her spirit rejoiced in God, <clears throat> and so um, you know you have a, a little bit of a, a debate over this, uh, you know, saying it's parallelism, uh, which is the other way that that I see it based on how the poetry is normally written, uh, but. Um, and Morgan uh, also equates the uh, soul with the mind, and so um, you know, either way, we're, we're seeing that Mary is uh, magnifying the Lord with uh, and rejoicing Him with all of her being. And then in uh, verse uh, forty-seven, we have the uh, also stated, the, you know, in, "In God, my Savior." And so, you know, we see that uh, you know, Mary was a woman of rare piety and purity. And uh, God Himself chose her to be the mother of Christ. But you know, again, like I said, uh, Mary was also a sinner like us. And why else would she say, "My Savior"? You know, if, if she didn't have any sin, then why would she need to be saved? Um, and so that's another you know, thing that kind of goes against what uh, you know, the Catholics believe, and because that's not supported by Scripture. And uh, that uh, you know, she's she's so impressed that you know God is mindful of her lowly condition. You know, as we see that uh, you know, he hath regarded the lowly estate of his handmaiden, as she says in the uh, in the next verse. All right, and then uh, now let's let me go ahead and read the uh, next stanza, uh, the the rest of this here for this other stanza. Uh, for behold, from from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he uh, that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. So uh, we go from focusing on Mary into focusing on uh, you know, God's uh, uh, holiness and his mercy, mind, faithfulness. Uh, as we go into this uh, next stanza, and that's how these others will, will, will focus. I mean, we see that uh, you know, the last part that talks about Mary is generation after generation will, will call her blessed on the account uh, on account of the way that God regarded her lowly estate. And, uh, and then uh, verses uh, 49 and 50, Mary, Mary celebrates the holiness of God uh, and the love of his name is holy. You know, he's merciful to those uh, who uh, reverence him one, one generation after another. All right, and then uh, we go on to, let's uh, wrap up with uh, 51 to 56 here. Uh, he hath showed me strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the, in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. And so uh, in this uh, ne next portion we see that uh, 
God doesn't have any respect for the proud. He's going to bring them down. He's going to bring them lowly. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's scattered them and, and put them in a, in a lowly place there. And then uh, in this uh, next section here, we go on seeing that uh, uh, in, in 53, he says this, He hath filled the, uh, the hungry with good things, and the rich hath sent, sent empty. You know, so he's, he's filled the hungry. You know, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, he's going to fill those. Uh, but, you know, the, the, those that uh, put their faith in their riches are going to be sent away empty. Uh, 54, uh, he hath hope, hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our father, uh, spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Uh, so, you know, he's. So she's talking about how great he is in, in remembering Israel and, and protecting Israel. And he even, you know, she even points back to uh, you know, Abraham and uh, the, the promises that uh, God had given to him and for uh, his seed and, and forever, you know, through uh, what uh, you know, God's doing uh, you know, through her in uh, delivering the uh, Christ child. And, uh, you know, this, this just shows that, uh, you know, how amazing that her knowledge of Scripture and eagerness is to... Uh, as an example for us to follow. And then uh, our, our last section, we, uh, we look into the uh, actual trip here in, in Luke 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And the taxing was first made when uh, Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph went up out of Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. And so in, in, in this we see that you know, Caesar Augustus, he was the most powerful empire, emperor at the time, and had you know, put it out that all the empire should be taxed. And so everyone was going to go and uh, be taxed here. We don't have an exact time frame, but we have you know, when this uh, Serenius was governor of Syria. So that gives us uh, you know, an estimate there. And then, uh, you know, well, there's not a whole lot of detail, but the, it, there actually has been documents that have been found in Egypt that supports this, uh, that uh, shows this around 6 AD, and uh, there's, you know, showing of a census, and uh, also with that showing of that census, it uh, shows, you know, this uh, portion here, that, that uh, they would have to go back to the uh, home of their ancestry, and so this, this allowed the uh, you know, scripture be fulfilled in uh, the, from Micah or from Micah five two that uh, says that uh, that you know the savior would be born from uh, Bethlehem. All right, and so uh, we go into verse five uh, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, uh, being great with child. All right, so you know at this point uh, you know Mary's you know very pregnant, you know about very close to giving birth, and uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that they use espoused here. Uh, the reason that it uses a spouse does that means that they haven't consummated the marriage yet. So uh, you know they're they're still like even though they were married, they hadn't uh, you know, physically consummated it. Uh, you know, so so to, to make sure that it's known that she's still virgin. All right, and uh, and so it was while they were there, the, the days were accomplished that she, that, uh, she should be delivered. Okay, so this happened like while they were there, so that maybe in a few days while they were staying with uh, your family that uh, she, she delivered the child. And uh, she, she would have done this you know, by herself. And usually there's a lot of other women around, but uh, no one else is mentioned here. So it's just Mary that's uh, delivering the child and swaddling him and taking care of him. <clears throat> and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. And uh, I wanted to point out that this uh, word inn is going to be the same word that's used in uh, Luke uh, 22. And uh, verse 11, uh, which is uh, translated there as guest, guest chamber. And uh, ye shall say unto them, uh, I'll, I'll read that. And ye shall say unto them, uh, the good men of the house, the master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And this guest chamber, uh, I'll, I'll go on to verse 12 to better explain this. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. So this is... You know, that, that's the end. It's going to be those, those larger upper rooms in these houses, and that, that's where they went to. They would went to, so the, uh, you know, idea that they went from end to end, place to place, looking for a place, and all these innkeepers turned them away just uh, is, 
kind of an exaggeration on, with uh, with this. That's you know, we've, that people have kind of taken liberty with. Uh, so realistically, this would have been that they went to uh, someone uh, that uh, they were related to. Their guest chamber was full from uh, from other family members, and so they would have stayed down in the lower level where they also keep where the family stays and where they also keep the animals. So that's where the, you know that's why they were out there with the animals and you know had to put them in the uh, manger and use the manger as the cradle. You know, it's not the uh, you know, same one as as we see in Luke ten thirty four. I just wanted to point that out because uh, I found that interesting that you know, we, we assume that they went from place to place when it was really just, you know, they went to a relative's house, couldn't stay in the upper room, so they had to stay down in the lower area with the family and with the, uh, with the animals. Uh, you know, the small animals, so, you know, no great big large animals. <clears throat> All right, so, uh, you know, we, and we see this uh, amazing thing happen here. You've got to work through, uh, you know, these designs and discreet and decrees and the destinations of kings and governors and common men to fulfill the words of his prophets. His Messiah, a, a descendant of David, which uh, you know, Luke is very uh, thorough in pointing out that uh, you know, Joseph is a descendant of David, uh, was born in Bethlehem uh, of a virgin. Uh, you know, he, he speaks of her being a virgin and again reminds us that she's espoused. And uh, you know, so no human uh, uh, delineation or could have foreseen this or accomplished the, the, all these details that came apart or that came through this. It was through God's sovereignty that uh, he orchestrated all these events to bring about his will and bring about the uh, Savior for us. And uh, just remember that uh, you know, through this time that he has us plans for our lives too that, that he uh, you know, demonstrates and, and orchestrates if we're willing to you know, study our Bible and to submit to His will like, uh, like Mary has. And uh, you know, I hope that this uh, you know, lesson will be you know, uplifting for you this week and uh, you know, I hope that you continue to uh, you know, st study this and, and you know, study what God's done. And that, uh, I hope uh, God keeps watch over you all this week and Merry Christmas. <laughs>